All right, so I know we're all very excited and ready to build our very first web interaction. But before we do that, uh, we need to take a moment and make sure that our workspace is set up and configured to do all the things that we're gonna be doing throughout the course. First of all, you do need to make sure that you have Node.js. You probably already have this installed if you've done any web development in the past, but just in case, go to node.js.org and download the latest long-term or LTS support of that, which is gonna give you access to both Node and the NPM commands inside of your terminal. Also, we're gonna be working a bit in the terminal throughout the course, and that's just gonna be kind of handling our build process and opening up folders and doing things like that. And you can use whichever terminal application that you're most comfortable using. In my case, you're gonna see me using an application called Hyper. You can install this both on Mac as well as Windows. It's an open source application. I really like it. You're welcome to check it out at hyper.is. But again, just feel free to use whichever terminal application that you prefer and you're gonna be fine as you go throughout the course. And as a large portion of the course is coding and creating web interactions through JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, you're obviously going to need some sort of code editor. And again, you can use whichever one you want, but you're gonna see me using Visual Studio Code. If you haven't used this before, I would highly recommend it. It's really great. Uh, I would say it's especially great once you can extend it and install all the add-ons and the extensions and the configuration that you need to be able to do exactly your type of developer workflow. I think it's a really great application. I've really uh, come to rely on it in doing my own development. You're also gonna see me using a few features from Visual Studio Code, uh, things like multiple cursors and selecting multiple instances of whatever you currently have selected. Uh, and all of these things are things you can do natively with Visual Studio Code. You may just have to familiarize yourself with some of the shortcuts and the keyboard commands. And uh, there's some really great documentation out there that uh, Microsoft has provided to give us kind of cheat sheets and everything on exactly the best ways to use that. And speaking of Visual Studio Code, you do want to have at least a couple of extensions installed. I have quite a few installed in my instance of Visual Studio Code, but at the very least, if you're going through this course, I would highly recommend to have ESLint installed. You can see it has 4.5 million installs as of this recording, which is pretty crazy. So there's a, a chance you may already have that, uh, but it's just basically a JavaScript linter, which is a really important, I think, when you're doing your own development. You don't technically need this, but it sure is going to make your life a lot easier. It's a, a good way to catch errors and um, provide suggestions before you actually save and try to build, and then you encounter an error maybe in the browser or in the terminal. Um, so it's just a good way that's going to help you develop faster and better. Also, similarly, we have SASLint installed. We are gonna be working on some SCSS or SAS files throughout the course, and for any of the styling and the style sheet work that you wanna do, uh, this is gonna similarly help you in that regard. And then finally, as I mentioned, I have a whole bunch of stuff in my Visual Studio Code instance that is configured and set up uh, just the way I like it. So if you're curious about anything, if you think, well, what is that font he's using or what is the extension? How did he do that? Um, I have everything documented out on GitHub. So you can follow the link to this. It's on the page. Um, just scroll down and, and take a look at that link. Uh, it's just out on GitHub at github.com slash Kyle Schaefer slash workspace. I have information about my uh, bash profile and my terminal setup, all the aliases that I use. I typically don't use those in recordings because that confuses people. Um, but uh, you can take a look at those in case you're curious. And also, of course, the settings.json, which is all of my configuration for Visual Studio Code. And then if you scroll down here, I'm listing all the extensions and the themes that I'm using inside of Visual Studio Code, as well as uh, within Hyper, um, and even some additional information about hardware, etc. All that stuff is documented here, so feel free to check that out in case you're curious about anything that you see me using throughout the course. And next we have parceljs.org, and you don't need to install anything or do anything with this. This is not a dependency for the course. Uh, we actually include this in the starter solution. So if you are working along, you don't really have to worry about this, but I just wanted to bring this up because we are using it quite a bit throughout the course. And if you've never used it before, it's basically a zero configuration application bundler. 
And basically what that means is it's gonna take our JS and our SAS files and our HTML file, it's gonna bundle it all up into a very browser friendly uh, solution and it's gonna run through a build process and then it's gonna present that in a local dev server. And this is gonna allow us to work very, very quickly because it's gonna watch the files that we're editing and it's gonna immediately update our browser with a refreshed version of those files. And this is really great. If you've ever used something like Webpack, it's similar. But what I really like about Parcel is you basically don't have to do anything. It's, again, a zero configuration. And it's a little bit opinionated about how they do the build process, so it's not quite as flexible as Webpack, but for most simple projects, this is great. It just does everything and you don't have to worry about all the complexity of a build process, uh, which is why we're using it throughout this course. So just in case you are curious or just in case you get into a troubleshooting scenario where you're like, hey, why is this not building? You could read more about Parcel at their website. They have really good documentation. I encourage you to go ahead and check that out. And last, I just wanna mention real quickly about the operating system and browser that you're gonna see me using throughout the course. Uh, if you haven't noticed, I'm on a Mac. Uh, so obviously I'm gonna be doing things with Mac keyboard shortcuts and using uh, the Mac operating system kind of switch back and forth between Windows. But honestly, there's not a lot of differences between Mac and Windows at this point. We're using entirely open source software, Visual Studio Code, Hyper, Node.js, all of this stuff is stuff you can install regardless of your operating system. So there really shouldn't be any differences other than maybe a couple terminal commands. And I'll try to point those out as we go through them. Uh, that you may be using. But if you're using Hyper or uh, Git Bash or something like that on Windows, it's really all the same anyway. So it just kind of depends on which terminal application you're using, which of those commands are supported. But for the most part, if you're on a Windows machine, you shouldn't see any differences between uh, what you see on my machine and what you're going to see there other than some aesthetic tweaks here and there. And we are using the Chrome web browser in this case. I would recommend doing that. You can certainly use another browser if you prefer it. But in particular, you should become familiar with your browser's developer tools. And if you're on a Mac, you can open these up using Command Option I. Or if you're on Windows, you can hit the F12 key inside of the Chrome web browser. And you get these tabs where you can do things like uh, elements, you can click on elements and kind of essentially just see what's going on in the page. And this is going to be really helpful when we're developing web interactions because we're going to need to see what's going on with the CSS and the HTML and all the stuff that we're coding into our applications that we're building. So if you've never used that before, definitely take some time and familiarize yourself with your browser's developer tools. It's going to be absolutely essential to be able to use that to build your own web interactions. And with that, we are ready to go ahead and begin building our very first web interaction project.